What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. This week, we're going to talk about the go-home show to Rebellion and then run down our predictions for Rebellion. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, I thought last night's episode was decent. I thought they did a good job with the go-home to set up for the pay-per-view. What's your uh, overall thoughts? Yeah, I agree as well. Um, normally, and I think my expectations walking in, <clears throat> excuse me, we're a little bit high just for the simple fact. For some reason, I always feel with the go-home shows, they really knock it out of the park. And that's not to poo-poo this episode, but it was just, it did what it did, you know, as far as having matches and then kind of getting us ready for Rebellion this upcoming Sunday. Yeah, yeah, no, they had a lot of video packages of the feuds and everything like that. And these feuds have been going on for quite some time. So, you know, I don't, I don't see people just tuning in now to watch the pay-per-view, but... So we open the show with Eli Drake. Uh, he says that the old Eddie Edwards is dead. Eddie was obviously the weak link in the team. And he said, you know, that's that's basically that. Eddie Edwards comes out. He grabs Kenny. He beats the crap out of Eli. They go backstage. And then we see them disappear. And then we come back. And Josh Matthews says, Eli Drake was last seen running away cowardly into the night. So I'm guessing that's uh, how they write, write him off. What a way. I mean, I get it. There's not really much they can do, given that he's no longer with the company. But, um, And I, I know we've seen Eli versus Eddie before, so I guess there's not that big loss in, as far as, like, dang, we're not going to get to see them wrestle again. But, yeah, um, I guess that's, you know, the best thing they can do to let people know they're not having no type of match because, believe it or not, when I was uh, watching on YouTube, and, and, you know, and it could be trolls, who knows? But it sounded like some people didn't know that he's not with the company anymore. Like, there is, like, maybe we'll get a match Sunday. So this kind of ensures that we're not getting that, and he is gone. You know, I I mean, I'm sure there are people that just watch on YouTube every week and don't interact with their... I don't even think anything was mentioned on their Twitter page. It was just on, on their website, right? Uh, I don't remember. I don't really go on their website so I, I wouldn't know i remember when i found the news out it was um reported by 411 uh wrestling yeah but it is what it is i mean eli drake just did post a tweet a couple minutes ago it's like quarter to or 10 to 11 on saturday morning and uh he had a picture of a plane ticket heading to toronto so i'm guessing that was probably the ticket he originally bought and he's just trolling fans yeah, I mean, I don't know what else is out there unless he's making an appearance at some promotion out there. But, yeah, that was funny. You know, get everyone thinking that there could be an appearance. I, I'm not going to lie. A part of me is like, don't tell me all this was a work. But I was like, <laughs> I'm going to think to myself, I said, nah, because, I mean, we talked about it. I said, when they came to terminating him, they were so adamant about it. Like, they, you know, I've never seen them when they get rid of somebody, like, just put it out there and then talent actually chiming in too so yeah yeah that would make things awkward unless you know everybody's on the same page but i don't see that being the case here if it is well we will discuss that when it if it happens and that's all i'm gonna say about that <laughs> right on all right so then we had ace austin versus aiden prince um if you guys remember a couple weeks back we had that what was that a six-way x division match i believe right ro yes yeah um and then Ace Austin had cut a promo the week after that saying that, you know, due to Aiden Prince, he was unable to gain the victory in the match. So he kind of called him out and we got this match. So that was good. At least they did build it a little bit. Um, I thought this was a good match. Uh, fast pace. Good, good match back and forth. Uh, Ace Austin seemed to solidify himself as a heel because, I mean, I guess up until this point, he was kind of a tweener. I guess when he first came in, he... I guess builds as a face, but at this point he was he is a heel. Um, he ends up going over with his finisher, the fold, which actually looked really brutal this week. I mean, we talked about it weeks back that uh, I believe you brought it up that Rich Swan had used this move in a match just as a regular move, but uh, this week Aiden Prince looked to like land on his head, so they did a good job with the finish. And then uh, we saw a post match beatdown by Ace Austin, and PD Williams comes out for the save. Petey goes for the Canadian Destroyer, but uh, Ace is able to escape. So I don't know if this is going to be a feud they build between him and Ace Austin. Um, had there been like a pre-show on Rebellion, I could see this being on there. But 
as far as that goes. I don't know. What do you think overall of this? Yeah, I thought this was fine. Uh, I you know I checked out a little bit when I uh, ace. I guess he did solidify his heel turn because it's just like, um, you know, another person turning. You know, and I, I know he he's relatively new to the company, so I guess, you know, no harm, no foul. Well, but uh, you you're also bringing out Petey Williams here in Canada, so you, you yeah, have... I, and yeah, and I guess that that kind of help helps it. Um, should they continue something with this or follow up? I should say because. You know, for all we know, this could have just been like a one-off. But should they continue? I think this is perfect. That's the perfect guy for Ace Austin to work with and former exhibition champ Petey Williams if, you know, they actually have big plans for Ace Austin. Like, I'm a f- big fan of, you know, when you're trying to build talent, if you got that veteran talent who's established, you know, to have them working with them. And, like, with a feud between these two guys, you could have a you know, low-level feud, you know, have – uh, multiple matches and stuff and then you know when you're ready to elevate him you know in the exhibition title scene you'll be able to given that he's worked with Petey Williams yeah yeah they did bring up the point that he is still undefeated in singles action but I mean we have a night of tapings in Canada after rebellion so they could just do some matches there but yeah no I, I agree I think if they do do something this could definitely help elevate Ace Austin um, he's definitely got a unique move set and seems very creative with things. So I like what I've seen so far. So let's hope it uh, continues. Uh, then we have Taya. She attacks Jordan Grace as she is working out at a local gym, I guess. Uh, we see Taya end up hitting Jordan with a dumbbell and then hitting her with a DDT onto a weight plate. So just continuing this feud some more. And then we get uh, an RVD promo. And he talks about coming to Impact and wrestling the people in the company. He said that he's here for what he's here for, and that is to deliver. So um, I guess there's going to be some high expectations of RD coming in. Yeah, and he just lets you know that, you know, for those who might have thought he was just going to be there to help work with some of the younger talent. I mean, yeah, but it is not going to be in, it might not be in the role of, you know, putting folks over. I mean, I think RVD wants his wins too, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised that we see him in the title picture. Yeah, I would agree with that. It'll just be interesting to see how they, if they book him in a lot of matches or, you know, limited in-ring, because, I mean, the dude is, what, 48 years old, right? Yeah, and, you know, where I'm going to be interested to see is because, you know, and I know we'll get to it, but I'm pretty sure he'll we'll see some type of appearance at Rebellion. I just kind of want to see what shape he's in, because like I like we had talked about, you know, it looked kind of rough at uh, United We Stand, and I figured you know give him the benefit of the doubt. So you know, hopefully, if he's in shape, you know, then and motivated, then you know we can see something good. Yeah, yeah, that's a good possibility of that. Uh, then we have the Rascals backstage. They all have notes in their hand to meet up in the same location. They're trying to figure out who wrote the letters. Moose shows up. He he tells Dez, nice win last week. Everyone gets lucky sometimes. And then he says he brought some new friends. And the Rascals expect it to be girls. Turns out to be the North. They all beat down the Rascals. And uh, this is going to be a six-man tag added to Rebellion. I thought this was a good segment. And... Uh, Made sense because we did see Moose feuding with the Rascals for the last month or so. So I think adding the North to this situation is uh, good for them. And it gets them on the pay-per-view and eyes on them. So I'm glad they did that. Yeah, I agree with you. I liked this. Uh, Then we find out that Scarlet says she's going to do a live smoke show at Rebellion. Um, I guess this is what we're going back to. Yeah, I don't get the uh, inconsistencies with her. Um, and I, I think it was kind of, we could kind of see it from a mile away. You know, we see her tagging with Follow one week. And, you know, I, not that I had thought that they were going to be some tag team, but I thought maybe she might be accompanying Fala. And then, um, you know, we don't, then I think there was a match before. I forgot what the, what, uh, um, the match Fala was in, but we didn't see, um, I almost called her Grace, my bad. We didn't see Scarlet up here. And then now to go back to the smoke show. Um, I mean, maybe we get a disco appearance and her and disco uh, reignite what they had a couple weeks ago. But, yeah, this is just kind of odd. Yeah, well, we'll see where it goes if they continue this with follow or 
who knows, maybe they'll put uh, her and Cross together since they are a real-life couple, and that seems to be the theme, um, especially with Cross being left off the card as of right now, which is surprising, at least in our eyes, as uh, he seems to be a guy they should be putting in or giving opportunities to. But we'll get to him in a little while. Then we have Rosemary versus the Undead Maid of Honor. Uh, Sue gives the Undead Maid of Honor the bloody glove. She goes after Rosemary. Rosemary hits her with the green mist and the spear for the win. Uh, after the match, Rosemary chains up the Undead Maid of Honor and drags her out. Uh, I thought they could have done something pretty cool with this, or they still could, is if you have her, Rosemary, trying to almost like cleanse or change the Undead Maid of Honor back to you know, a normal person, and that's how you introduce somebody to the company, because I believe this was probably Casey Spinelli that played the Undead Maid of Honor. I know she's done it a lot of times when they're in Canada, and uh, she's somebody I always thought could have been added to the Knockouts division. We did see her during the uh, GFW days, at least a little more often than not, but... Uh, yeah, th- you- no, this one this one wasn't her. I, I, I it looked, wasn't? I looked- yeah, I looked at her, and because with Casey Spinelli, you can tell just because of like the shape of her body and, and the way that she moves. Um, this is so different, but yeah, um, you know what I just found odd was because neither one of these people have a match. Well, being Rosemary and Sue, um, I'm surprised, and maybe it's something they add on at Rebellion. But I was just shocked by that. Yeah, um, I feel like they could drag this out, but. I don't I don't see them dragging it out another three months to slam anniversary. Yeah, chances are um we'll probably get it at the I'm assuming these tapings when they do the Canada because it's the day of tapings. Probably um what's that gonna be like for a couple weeks or just one yeah, week? Yeah, it should be two weeks. Yeah, they'll probably drag something out those two weeks. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, because I mean they really haven't done too too much since rosemary's been back to actually have a match between her and sue and you would think that they would build it up a little more but we will see uh so we get swan visiting the ove compound he meets with the chris brothers outside they say sammy isn't there swan starts banging on the door he gets no answer swan goes through his and sammy's pass again no answer from sammy so swan decides to leave says i guess i'll see you sunday And then eventually Sammy pops his head out, slams the door, and goes back inside. Just doing more of what they've been doing. I've I've really liked what they've done with this storyline, considering how personal it's been. And it seems like Sammy wants this to be an OVE rules match. I believe he said that if he doesn't get this from management, he's going to spoil the Avengers movie for everybody live on TV. (laughs) That's a heel move if I've ever heard one. Yeah, to me, this is one of the... um been the best uh feuds the way that the it's been booked and the story that's been told um i'm really interested and that's probably why i'm you know, really interested to see how it plays out at the pay-per-view yeah yeah because i think uh a lot of things could change with uh if sammy ends up getting that championship uh, then we have the lucha brothers and johnny impact backstage the lucha brothers talk spanish johnny says he doesn't understand what what they're saying but he likes their intensity he tells them he'll see him out there and we have Killer Cross versus Willie Mack. I enjoyed this match. I, I thought this is a match they could have built for the pay-per-view. Just you had an extra week where they did, you know, backstage segments or some sort of interaction between the two. Uh, we see Willie Mack go for a standing moonsault, but Cross transitions it into the cross jacket, and I think Willie Mack passes out. Uh, what did you think of this match here? Yeah, I thought this was uh, this was nice. Um, you know, Cross and. You know, I don't want to compare in the sense of because, you know, they're two different, you know, styles. But I feel, <clears throat> you know, when we talk about with Eli, like how polished Eli was, like I kind of see that with Cross now. Like just he has the look and everything. And, you know, I worry if that's something because, you know, we see now, you know, nowadays just with wrestling all over, you know, the days of having the big giants or, you know, the really in shape people, you know, we don't see it as much, you know, you kind of see, every, you know, wrestlers now, you know, they, they look like regular people. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I just think sometimes like, you know, the poly, the people that are polished or TV ready, uh, sometimes they can't, you know, thrive you know, for, for whatever reason, it really doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like this. I really like the ending and, you know, they did it in a way I'm guessing to protect Willie Mac. Although, mm-hmm. um, does everyone 
pass out from the cross jacket choke or do some people ta- actually tap? Uh, I think more often than not, they've passed out. I don't recall anyone necessarily tapping out. Okay, all right. Well, then, so then that that's fine. Yeah, um, this is something, you know, once again, they could follow up with and have a nice little feud. I mean, these are two guys they obviously don't have anything for at this moment. So, you know, why not let them feud together? But then, you know, the key thing is going to be what's going to happen after. You know, you can't drag, you know, something out three, four months. So just have to wait and see. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, Willie Mack was one of the people that RVD had brought up because I believe he calls his frog splash the six star frog splash or something like that. So, yeah, there is that. Um, and we had the debut of the Deaners on Impact. They took on Halal Beefcake. Um, this was a good debut for them. Uh, Jake Something is definitely an impressive individual. He uh, he definitely looks like a guy that could uh, do some damage down the road. Um I mean, I've enjoyed a lot of their promo work. The match was fine, but uh, I think these guys are two guys you build up more as characters rather than their in-ring work. And uh, they go over with, uh, I think Josh had called it the Diener DDT, but I saw Cody Diener posting on Twitter asking people what to call their finisher. (laughs) Yeah, I I see this team, and and I've mentioned to you about it, this seems like a team that they're, you know, as long as they're a team, I mean, I don't know how you integrate them in a tag uh, team scene but i do think the potential is going to be if they split them up and push jake something uh by himself i think then that's when you know they'll really thrive and I'm, i mean i guess you can't say really thrive but you know one of them will thrive i mean yeah, I'm, I'm sure with with diener i don't know and correct me if i'm wrong is he is he does he come across as a big guy to you on tv or does he seem like a smaller guy well i mean he's a little smaller i mean he's six foot uh, I mean, I, I just, you know. Okay, so well, I mean, if they were to split him up, I'm thinking probably throw him in the X division since he, if he's you know that small in stature. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just interested to see how they um continue this team. And I, I know this is just our first glance at them, but how they continue this team because I I really think you know if they really want to build stars at Jake something, they might want to separate him and uh you know move him up. Yeah. Let's let's not talk about splitting them up already as we've <laughs> seen them debut. Come right. on now. Um, but yeah, no, I think Diener's in his late 30s. So, you know, if something does happen with uh, Jake elevating himself, I'm not sure how old he actually is. But yeah, I could see him or uh, Cody managing him and they could still be the Diener's together. So right. it's not like it could. Uh... But yeah, no. A- We'll see where this goes. Like you said, it'll be interesting to see how they fit in to the tag division. But like I said, I think these guys are more character based. They should do what they kind of done with the Rascals and have them in a lot of backstage segments and things like that um, to promote who they are rather than their in ring work like I could see them doing with the North. Right. Um, Then we have Johnny Impact and Taya. They come out to the ring before the main event and cut a promo about their relationship with Lance Storm, since both of them have been trained, at least in some way, by Storm. Uh, Taya is, I think, a graduate of the Storm Wrestling Academy, and I believe Johnny said he was trained in OVW by Lance Storm. Um, And Johnny says he can always count on an old friend. Storm gives us his, uh, if he can be serious for a moment, which got a good pop from the crowd. Uh, he says his integrity has never been for sale, and Johnny has to beat Cage on his own. At this point, Taya slaps Lance Storm, and then Lance Storm super kicks Johnny. So we know that at some some shape or fashion, Lance Storm is going to have a role in that finish of the match. You know what I find so funny with this? Taya attacks uh, Lance Storm, but Lance Storm attacks Johnny. <laughs> Johnny wow. didn't even do any do anything. <laughs> I mean, if, if anything, he was startled. But <laughs> I was like, "Where's the correlation in this?" <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then we uh, have the main event: Brian Cage and LAX versus Johnny and the Lucha Brothers. I'm guessing this was set up as the contenders versus the champions, rather than the heels versus the faces, since the whole LAX Lucha Bros thing has kind of Throwing a lot of people off as far as who's the heels and who's the faces. I think they're trying to get away or, you know, maybe just my own personal opinion. I think they're trying to get away from the face heel kind of uh, alignment because we kind of we kind of see now, you know, they 
in fans, you know, they cheer for whomever. I mean, I don't, I don't really know who really flat out gets booed. I mean, you might hear some boos here and there, but uh, uh, yeah, because this match, I mean, it didn't make sense from that standpoint. Well, Johnny definitely gets booed. <laughs> well, yeah, fair, fair, but I'm just saying, like, well, Lucha Brothers, I don't know if they, if they, they get booed. I mean. It, it, you know, even though when you can look past that part, I mean, it was a good match. Um, you know, this is something that you normally expect for a go home where you got, you know, challengers teaming up to face, you know, the champions that they're challenging. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, no. um, this it's, was fine. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, it's just a typical combination that you have before, before a pay per view. I mean, if anything, I think Lucha Brothers did, uh, and at least for this match, played heels because they are the ones that uh, busted open a uh, cage. Yeah, yeah, that was that was an interesting spot because uh, the Lucha Brothers grabbed, I think, a ladder and a chair from under the ring, and then Pentagon hit Cage over the head with the chair. I don't know where where it caught him or how it caught him, but all of a sudden he's just bleeding everywhere, and uh, he picks up Johnny Impact to hit him with Weapon X, and you just see blood all over Johnny as. Uh, he successfully hits Weapon X and pins Johnny. So that was that. Yep. But uh, no, they. I thought it was a decent match as well. I mean, they gave it a good amount of time. And uh, once the match got going, I think that's when everybody really started involved. And uh, yeah, so that sets up Rebellion. Yeah, we're finally here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it felt like it took a little while, but... Uh, so three months since homecoming, and we have, what, two title rematches, right? Johnny Impact and Brian Cage and the Lucha Brothers versus LAX from yes, homecoming. Sir. Yeah. All right, so where do you want to start off with the predictions? You want to do, uh, I guess, the Rascals versus Moose and the North, since that was the most recent match added? Yeah, let's do it. Um, you want to go first for me? No, you can go first. Um, I'm gonna go with Moose in the North. Um, I I know the Rascals probably need to win since you know the past couple weeks stands from you know last week where Dez got the upset. Um, you know Moose has really ran through them, but I just kind of think with the North's inclusion in this, like you can't afford to have them lose. So um, I think uh, Moose in the North beat the Rascals in this. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna agree with you on that. You know this is this will be the North's second match, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so I, I don't see them losing, and just the uh, the stature of both teams is uh, seems to be very telling. I'm sure the Rascals will have. I'm sure it'll be a very good match. Yeah, I I think uh, um, too. What I I think the Rascals will really sell for the North. <clears throat> excuse me, and Moose. You know, being you know X Division guys, so they'll probably take some bumps. Yeah, and this could set up the North versus the Rascals in some sort of tag feud as well. Yep. Uh, I guess we'll go with uh, the other non-title match that's been announced, and that is Gail Kim versus Tessa Blanchard. Um, I'm, I mean, I know the way they should go, and I, I just don't see how anyone benefits from the outcome of this match. You have Tessa win, and it's like, all right, you beat a woman who's retired and you have gail win and well what does that do for gail if she's not an active competitor but i mean i hope that tessa goes over here yeah i'm 50 50 um i'm gonna say tessa wins that's what my i'm going with my heart um, I think they're, it's going to be a competitive match. You know, oh, I know we had, is. I know we had talked about man, she should just run over her. Just given that you know she's an active participant and Gail isn't anymore, but um, I think they're really going to build this match. Um, I do think this, whatever the outcome is, we're going to see this probably in Canada, where the loser gets the pin as well. So, in the event that Tessa were to win on pay per view, she's going to lose to Gail at uh, the tapings when they go back to. Uh, well, they're still in Canada, but the tapings at Canada, and then vice versa. Yeah, you think they're gonna they're gonna continue it a little bit? Well, it, it it's hard for me to believe that they would want Gail to lose in her hometown. So, 
you know, she's going to pick up a win, you know, whether it's on pay-per-view or on TV. And now <laughs> thinking of it, I mean, I could see it more so <laughs> happening at the pay-per-view than on TV. But um, I'm, I'm still going to go with uh, Tessa. So do you think if or whoever the winner of this match is will go on to have some sort of feud in the knockouts title picture? Not at all. No. Um, that's why <laughs> see you're going to convince me like that's why if they feel Gail can work a small program with Tessa and they can extend it they'll do so that way it keeps Tessa at the title picture because you know if Tessa runs through Gail one would assume that you know Tessa will be focusing her sights on the knockouts title again and they probably don't want her in it at this moment because they're trying to clear the way for you know whoever <laughs> yeah Fair enough. All right. And now we are up to the titles matches. Um, honestly, I could see every title changing. I could see no titles changing. It, it It's pretty much up in the air here. Um, I guess we'll go with the uh, X Division Championship match. Rich Swan defending against Sammy Callahan. Um, it is definitely time to pull the trigger on Sammy Callahan. Give him a title. The man has shown that he is obviously um, very capable of whatever role they give them, give him. And I think giving him the X division championship is definitely the right move. I mean, as of right now, it doesn't look like the man is going to win that world title. Um, but hopefully the X division championship comes home to him. Yeah, I'm going with Sammy. Um, I think he's probably more of the compelling character and I think him as champion, um, we'll see him every week and, I just think he can do so much more. I mean, I know there's going to be a population of people who believe, well, he doesn't scream X Division. Like, we really don't know what the definition of X Division is. Um, they say there's no limits and all that other stuff. So um, it's a mid-card title um, till <clears throat> further further notice. So, yeah, I'm going with Sammy. Um, yeah, I don't know where Swan would go from here, assuming that he does drop the title. But, uh, yeah, it's Sammy's time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there is always that chance of option C if he does go for that world title. Yeah, and that that's the one thing. And I I hope they don't do that because that's what's killing the X Division title. Um, you know, you think about last year, you know, it's earning its prestige back. I think we had Seidel as champion. And then when Cage won it, and, you know, to Cage's credit, you know, he was a great champion. You know, I think, you know, what he ran into a lot of people we couldn't believe excuse me, uh, was being, you know, beating him for the title. And then, you know, for him to cash in, that's what I kind of hated. And then, you know, for them to do that again, that route, you hate to see that the values of the title, I believe. Yeah. Well, I think it was disappointing back and bound, bound for glory when they had that six man tag match with Brian Cage and the Lucha brothers versus OVE and the X division championship wasn't on the line. Yeah, you know, I'm always going to hate that where, you you know, you put the belt on people and, you know, the belt should be defended, uh, you know, every time pretty much the way I feel when you're champion, especially on pay-per-view. So, yeah. Yep. Um, I guess we'll go to the Impact Knockouts Championship. Taya Valkyrie defends against Jordan Grace. Um, it seems like uh, I could see Jordan picking up this championship. It seems like uh, that's kind of where they're going. We've seen her have... Was this her third championship opportunity, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, because she had the one back in the during the Vegas tapings where Taya weaseled her way out of it, and then she got the match at United We Stand, and then now at Rebellion. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's it's time to give Jordan a chance with the title. Um, where you go from there, I, I don't know. Maybe they continue a small program that eventually. You know, Ty gets a rematch or something like that, and then that's that. Yeah, I, I think Grace is taking this. Um, Ty doesn't need it. Uh, this, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I guess I'm kind of losing my voice today. Um, Ty doesn't need the title. It's clear. You know, she's been so involved with Johnny Impact's stuff that uh, the title's essentially becoming hostage. Um, like I was telling you offline, I can't remember outside of when she faced Tessa, like the last um female participant she actually engaged with it with because she's been so involved with johnny stuff you know whether it's interfering in his matches you know low-blowing uh um k 
cage to pushing backstage interviewers to you know attacking referees uh yeah she hasn't really you know you forget that she's a knockouts champion so yeah i think this is the perfect way to get the title off of her and put it on someone now whether you you know you think grace is ready or not i mean that that doesn't matter at this point sometimes you just kind of have to just roll the dice and just hope that you you know the gamble pans out but yeah yeah, i I got grace winning this yeah and i I don't even think this will be a long match probably not i mean like we said tyus kind of weaseled her way out of things so i could see jordan having a dominant victory here Um, i actually i wanted to throw out a one prediction mm. i think cage interferes and costs her uh tyus her title I don't know, man. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, could could be. <laughs> I, I just I just kind of think it would play into you know with her always getting involved in Johnny's stuff. And I'm not saying he's an attack Taya, but might may, might be a distraction. I could see it being a little of the opposite if Taya regains the title through screwy ways, and she starts to get involved in the main event. I could see Jordan coming out and taking Taya out. Okay, I see. Yeah, but we'll see. That's all there. That's all you can do. <laughs> uh, and then we have the Lucha Brothers defending their Impact World Tag Team Championship against LAX in a full metal mayhem match. Um, I think these titles are going back on LAX. And I'm going to have to disagree. I think Lucha Brothers are going to retain. Yeah. I, I think just think it's time to split the lucha brothers up because i think there's much more value in having them as singles competitors yeah i i don't know i i think the only way these titles drop is if that rumor holds some weight about them potentially being exclusive to aew but um if that's not the case and they can still work anywhere they want to work yeah i think they're retaining i don't know what that does for lax but uh yeah yeah i mean Maybe you're right, because I guess if LAX does take the titles back, they've hot potatoed them, and I guess that could continue things a little longer. <laughs> yep. But, now nah, I'm still going to hold LAX. I just feel like they are Impact's team, so... And then we're going to end up getting them versus the North at Slammiversary. That'll be my bold prediction from now. Then we have the main event... Johnny Impact defending the Impact World Championship against Brian Cage with Lance Storm as the special guest referee. You know, I mean, it seemed like all signs were pointing to Brian Cage leaving with the championship, but I could see another another screw job where Johnny still retains the title. Much like you said, RVD makes an appearance, and we see those two face to face at the end of the show. Yeah, I uh, I know I've been joking about the cage coordination, but yeah, my uh, choices uh, changed too. I think here's my thing between Johnny and Ty, one of them's losing their title. Mm-hmm. So one lo- if one retains, the other one's uh, losing theirs. That's why I believe Ty will lose hers, but I think Johnny retains his. Um, the route that they do it, I mean, I could see there being some type of interference. And that doesn't involve Lance Storm. And then I could obviously see see some that involve Lance Storm. Um, I'm not convinced, you know, given what we've seen on Impact, that you know, with even you know Storm attacking attacking uh, Johnny or super mm-hmm. kicking Johnny, like that didn't really convince me that he's gonna call it down the middle. Um, so yeah, I'm going with uh, Johnny Impact. Uh, retaining the title due to shenanigans yeah i mean the last two pay-per-views were filled with shenanigans so i mean i if they just did a clean finish i i would be okay with that even if it, you know if it was the coronation of brian cage and that that was that that would be fine with me but i just i just don't feel like that's gonna happen especially with uh cage standing tall over johnny the uh go home show and and then it's just i i think too um and obviously, like, you know, if Cage wins, Cage wins. I mean, you know, could you imagine, though, if he does lose, you know, you've dragged this out, you know, since homecoming. And then did he have him keep coming up short? Like, I just think there's so many um, 
you know, whether it's Taya or it's uh, Johnny Bravo and then, uh, you know, having a special referee. And we kind of seen this not too long ago with when Gail was a special guest referee um, that we're going to get some type of clean match, like regardless of the outcome. Yeah, and there's too it, many. Uh... <laughs> yeah, too many variables. And yep. I mean, I, I really believe like, you know, if they really want if Cage is going to be the guy, then a clean win would be the way to go. But yeah, I, I just kind of just think with, there's too much. Like, I think Johnny's going to pull this off. Um, and then, you know, I, I do think Johnny's uh, title ring is going to come to an end, but it might be more in the tapings. I, I say in Philadelphia. Yeah. And uh, depending on if they are continuing it, because we haven't heard any mention of it, but uh, Johnny didn't win that ultimate X match at United. We stand with the, uh, with I guess getting an X division opportunity. So, I don't know if that's gonna come into play at all. Yeah, you know, I for, I keep forgetting about that. I mean, who knows? Um, there's been times people have won stuff and you know get a future title shot and they never follow it up. I mean, it just it just all depends. I think that would come into a play more like every everything seems like it's kind of like a domino effect like if swan were to retain and johnny were to lose then i could see right. a path where johnny would challenge swan but uh yeah that's why I, i'm not gonna lie to you like what has me most interested about this pay-per-view is just the booking uh, decisions of it all and I, I mean i know the theme is always you know just sit back and enjoy as a fan and stuff and you know, you know, sorry, I can't follow what everyone else does. I wasn't raised to be a follower, but um, I'm just interested just because, you know, it can go one way or the other. And then, you know, just the aftermath of a lot of these things. Right. And especially since we've talked about it, I know other people have talked about it as well. With Johnny Impact retaining, you don't have that face built up to challenge him, really. But then you insert RVD and, you know. I really think there's a path where RVD is the guy that not only challenges Johnny, but uh, defeats Johnny. And then maybe Cage is the one who beats RVD. Um, I know that's probably a little bit far fetched, but I, I, I just I, I just don't know. And I think especially if Johnny walks out as champion, I think there's a path for that, especially the way they've been pr- promoting RVD. Like, it doesn't come across to me as somebody who's just going to be some type of special attraction. Like, he's going to probably, you know, I'm just assuming he's going to probably use the top of the card in a prominent role. And, um, you know, I could see an RVD versus Johnny match, you know. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's a lot of things up in the air. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see where they go post-Rebellion. Um, you know, we have the night of tapings after the day after Rebellion, and then I believe that Friday and Saturday they go to Philadelphia and tape, right? I think it's like the third and fourth or second and third. Yeah, the third and fourth. Yeah, so that'll that'll be interesting. Um, very curious to see what they do in Philadelphia. It seems like, uh, you know, that is the old ECW arena, so there is a lot of ECW influence in Impact Wrestling these days, so that'll be very interesting to see. Um, yeah. Rebellion still has not sold out. There's still some seats left, so I wonder if they're going to do that. Uh, we have six matches for the show. There were eight on Homecoming, so I'm wondering if they end up adding some more to that. Uh, let me see. There was eight on Bound for Glory as well. And I think that was... Eight on Redemption last year. And eight on Slammiversary. So it looks like eight is that number. So there's definitely a possibility they add a couple matches here and there. Um, if they do add any matches, what do you what do you hope to see? Um, I, I really, know it's I a really, tough one. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't know. I mean, my guess is have some kind of a multi-man or a multi-woman match that crowns a number one contender. You can never go wrong with that. Yeah, some sort of X Division match to kick things off. Yeah, but that that uh um yeah, that's the only thing that can that I could think of. So or some type of bat you know, battle royal or something like that. Yeah, be interesting to see. Um, you have anything else you want to add? We're actually only like forty minutes in this week. 
Um, okay, let me ask you this. I mean, without, you know, getting your d- decision, because I think there was a guy on Twitter, um, I forgot the name, the Twitter handle, but he was talking about the pay-per-view and, you know, if it's worth $40. Um, what are your take on $40 pay-per-views? I know, obviously, with once the E had, you know, debut the network and put in at the price tag of $9.99, you know, you do the math, that's four months of the um, network subscription. Network, yeah. So, I mean, that's four pay-per-views. Um, you know, I know sometimes they have uh, multiple ones, but how do you feel about paying $40 for a pay-per-view? Are you, uh, do you like love or hate it? Um, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I mean, I've done it the last year and a half for Impact. Um, it, it's just a tough thing to do right now because, like I said, like you said, the bar has kind of been set with things being ten dollars for the network and getting multiple pay per views a month sometimes. Um, but I believe you know, double or nothing, all in. That's a forty dollar pay per view. It's just so hard when you're a fan of multiple promotions that you're spending all this money. Like you know, we said. United We Stand was $20, and that was, what, the beginning of this month, and then you're paying $40 for Rebellion, That's so it's $60 a month you're spending on Impact. I mean, that's it's it's tough to ask people of that. That's, that's you know. But, again, I guess that's the position that they're in. They don't have the luxury of having the GWN streaming anything, um, so I guess it is what it is right now. You know, I, I guess I look at it, too, um, while I kind of get like say Impact only has four pay per views a year, so you know it makes it makes them kind of mean something. But then too, I think there's just an added pre- an added pressure to deliver. Like mm. you can't have no type of old solid pay per view. I think it it has to knock it out. And I know that's all you know in um in the opinion of the watcher. But I just think if. If there's a feeling where like it doesn't feel like it's forty bucks, because I know one of the complaints is like forty bucks just for five matches, let alone a lot of them are rematches. Like no thanks. Like, um, like me, me personally, I think it's outdated. But I understand in Impact's case, since they you know don't give as many, why they would put that. But yeah, I I really just think them not finding a way to have it even on the GWN. Like it it may be too. Um, and I, I know you people can order it through Fight, but not having a way to get it through the GWN is just mind-boggling to me. Um, you know, because some people prefer to kind of watch it on TV. Like, you know, if you have the app on TV, you can watch it on TV. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing the Fight app probably works that way, too. Yeah, but, yeah. I've, it's been very good the times I've used it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it just all depends. I mean, if you got $40, which, you know, I'm not trying to count anyone's pockets. It's not the largest amount of money in the world um i'm sure you know you, you get you and a couple of your friends you know each pitch in 10 bucks and boom you can purchase a pay-per-view but i could understand why people would be against to paying it and i know you know the silliest argument you know that i had seen and stuff was you know when they were trying to compare the network to you know paying 40 dollars, and it's like well you get so much other stuff on top of you know, being able to watch pay-per-views. So, yeah, does that mean sometimes the pay-per-views, they're probably not going to go all out because, you know, people are only taking 10, I mean, only paying 10 bucks to see it. Mm -hmm. Sure, but there's so much other stuff where, you know, people continue to pay that 10 bucks a month. It's not just that pay-per-view. Whereas you pay $40 for a pay-per-view, and if you're disappointed, you know, A, you can't wait next month to see another pay-per-view. And B, even if you could, that's another forty dollars. So essentially, you didn't spend eighty dollars on two pay per views, and which one that you were, uh, you know, displeased with. So you know, it's just an in- interesting conversation. Um, like many things, you know, I'm able to, you know, for the people that don't have a problem with it or the people that have a problem with it, I'm able to see both sides without placing judgment. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was an interesting discussion. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Um, I, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's it's tough when you're a fan of multiple things and, you know, you're just a wrestling fan and there's a lot of money that needs to be spent in order to see multiple shows. I mean, with Fight, at least generally if you order it a decent time ahead, they give you like credits and you can do some other things to get credits. I think I have like 30 something dollars built up in credits. So 
you know, if next one I buy, I'll be able to get a free pay per view. So at least they have that going for them. Right. Right on. One th- one thing I am a little disappointed in, and um, I noticed that I think Impact or maybe Sammy Callahan posted that Rebellion is able to be purchased through the PlayStation Store, but the GWN still isn't available on the PlayStation. <laughs> and you know what? It's crazy because on the Xbox Xbox or Xbox One, you can get the GWN mm-hmm. app, but you can't get the. I don't think you can get the Fight app. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. Because that's how I used to watch Explosion um, before I just started watching it on my computer. Every uh, um, time they'd have it uploaded, I'd watch it from uh, my Xbox. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I guess that's all for this week, right? Yeah, pretty much. Just uh, kind of looking forward to how things uh, pan out. Um, at ex- uh, Explosion. <laughs> <in> my- <laughs> I don't say Explosion. Uh, rebellion. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of a lot of variables going in, and it's going to make next week's show very interesting. Um, hopefully, people are willing to tune in with the outcome of Rebellion. Um, we are not doing a review right after the show. We will be back next Saturday to do a review along with the review for the show after Rebellion. So thank you guys for listening to our show, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.